Welcome, folks. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about Nginx Surface Mesh Observability. And today we're going to do that with the open source LGTM stack from Grafana. So my name is Ward Becker, and I'm a senior solutions engineer at Grafana Labs. And for today's uh, very short lightning talk, uh, 10 minutes, uh, we're going to go over what the LGTM stack is, demo setup, and of course, an actual demo on how that will look like with the Nginx Surface Mesh. So let's get into it. So the LTTM stack, so LGTM, is of course consistent of Grafana. So the G is Grafana. But uh, nowadays we also have L for logs, which is Loki, T for tempo, and M for Mimir, which is a recent addition to the LTTM stack. So if we look at Grafana, it has been a tremendous successful open source project. It's the de facto standard for a lot of the monitoring visualization and observability visualization. And uh, we're nearing the 1 million active instances. So that is incredibly easy, uh, great to see. And uh, I hope we reach that milestone pretty soon. The L is for Grafana Loki, which is our log aggregation tool. And it's modeled after Prometheus. So when you use Prometheus and you want to do log aggregation, it's a great combination. The T is for Tempo, which is our tracing backend. And this is, can be used for storing open telemetry traces. So it's fully compatible with that. And one of the benefits of Tempo is that you don't need to do sampling. You can actually scale it incredibly high, but also be cost efficient at the same time. So you don't need a huge amount of resources. And the latest addition is Grafana Mirmir. So this is a fork of Cortex, and Cortex is also a project where Grafana contributed a huge amount of effort in, or a huge amount of commits. We think it's the most scalable, most performant open source time series database in the world. And um, what we tested it with was 1 billion active series. So that's a huge amount. And of course you don't need to do that uh, if you don't, but uh, it just makes uh, it very clear that it's incredibly good to scale. Uh, so make sure that your metrics platform is future proof. And uh, we already got a huge amount of traction in the open source community. So um, within uh, just a few days, we had over one, uh, over 2,000 stars. So that's really great on GitHub. So that is, in short, the LGTM stack. Uh, that's based on looks good to me. So for today's demo setup, um, we'll have two environments. One environment that lives in the Google Cloud Communities Engine, and there we're gonna install Nginx Service Mesh. So for today's demo, I'm using version 1.4. We also gonna install the Book Info Microservice application, which we use for demoing. And then uh, the Grafana agent, which is also an open source project, will take care of the metrics, logs, and tracing collection. So in this case, we're gonna scrape the Prometheus metrics from our cluster and Nginx Service Mesh the Loki logs from the pods, and the traces are going to be sent to Tempo. So on the right side, what you can see here is that we have the Grafana LGTM stack. So today I'm going to use Grafana Cloud, which is our SaaS. And, uh, but for open source, uh, locally installation, it works exactly the same. And there you have the LTTM components with Grafana on top for the visualization. For today's demo scenario, uh, we're gonna go through a few steps. So we're gonna start out by looking at the configuration of the Nginx service mesh, the Grafana agent, and uh, some other stuff that we need to deploy to make sure this all works. Then we're gonna deploy all the things, of course, and clicking around in the book info demo app. So we're gonna use the demo app to generate some test loads. So we can actually look in Grafana to see if we actually are getting the metrics that we want, the logs that we want, the traces that we want. And uh, of course, uh, let's also take a look at some sample dashboards that you can create on this demo or on this data. All right. So with further ado, let's switch to the demo. So here I have the config files for today's demo. We'll use Helm to install the Nginx service mesh. A few overrides are needed for our specific setup. The Nginx logs format is set to JSON to make log parsing easier. By default, the Helm chart installs a Prometheus and a Jaeger backend. Today, we'll use the LGTM stack on Grafana Cloud so we can disable those. We set the address of the trace collector to the Grafana agent. And we also set the sample ratio to one to get 100% of the traces. Next, we'll look at the config map for the Grafana agent. The logs agent deploys deployment tills the pod logs and also acts as an open telemetry tracing collector. So logs and traces are pushed to the backend. So if I open the log section here, yeah, great. 
So you will see that the log scraping config is almost identical to a typical Prometheus scraping config. And here in the tracing, we're going to start up an OTLP endpoint. All right, next up is the metric configuration. So the metrics config map configures the scraping of the Kubernetes API. And at the bottom, we also have a specific section to scrape the Nginx mesh sidecars. All right. To make sure that uh, traces can be sent, we need to create a small service. So this is the tracing service to make sure that these are available to the rest of the cluster. And uh, like I mentioned, we have a book info application, which is a sample application that uh, deploys um, a microservice application from with multiple pods and each pod handles part of the request and response flow and is great for generating some test loads. Well, we already looked at enough YAML for today, so let's deploy the components. So this is the install script for that, and uh, let's switch to the terminal app to actually install them. So our files are there, and let's run the install script. All right, so that is running. Cool. Seems all good, great. So we're switching over to the K9S app. So I'm a big fan of this UI uh, because it allows you to interact with your Kubernetes cluster through a CLI, so that's great. And we can actually see that our pods are ready. So next up is that we're gonna create a port forward to the product page pod so we can interact with this application and generate some test loads. So here, let me just click on some links here. And this of course will be translated hopefully in metrics, logs, and traces. All right, so let's see in Grafana if we actually have some data. So this is the Grafana Explorer view, um, and I've already selected my metrics endpoints, and that's uh, powered by Grafana Mirmir, and we actually see quite a lot of Nginx metrics already, so that's great. So let's see if we're also receiving logs. So I'm selecting my Loki endpoint. And indeed, we're receiving logs from Nginx labeled containers. So let's look at the logs from the sidecar. And yeah, there we are receiving those logs. And indeed, we see some of the JSON payload. So that's great. Success. All right, next up is looking at the traces. So we're gonna select the tempo endpoint and uh, in the surface dropdown, we can see indeed that we are receiving traces from our demo info app or book info app, sample app. And um, we're gonna run the query and we are getting a few traces. So let's select one of those. And when we select one of those, you will notice that there's gonna be a split view where, and, and at the right, we have uh, the trace being viewed, it's a quite simple trace with only two spans, but um, it shows the concept and we, we can see that the Nginx search mesh creates an outgoing trace span and an incoming trace span with all kinds of attributes, which can be quite handy for correlation. We verified that uh, we're receiving metrics, logs and traces from the Nginx service mesh. So let's create uh, a few dashboards on top of it. Uh, we don't have the time to really look in the creation, but uh, here you can see a sample one where I actually use a lot of the, uh, or create metrics on top of the logs. So a lot of this stuff is just generated from the Nginx access logs that are being emitted by the sidecars. So that's really cool and really flexible. And uh, on this demo, so if you install the Nginx uh, Ingress controller, you can also, for example, create a dashboard like this. Again, this is based on the access log, from the Ingress controller. And uh, yeah, you get all kinds of ad hoc metrics. And yeah, you might wonder when you see this is why, well, I have Prometheus, why do I need, for example, Loki for generating all those metrics? Well, the reason for that is that um, uh, a lot of these Prometheus metrics can be quite high cardinality, which is perfectly fine, uh, but it means that you just need more resources to run um, um, such an, a huge amount of active series. And so for example, here, if we look at the cardinality management overview dashboard on Carvana Cloud, we see that 
um, the Nginx service mesh in the Prometheus metrics automatically adds a timestamp. Well, that's not really best practice and uh, that can result in more Prometheus resource usage. So for that, we would recommend actually um, removing, dropping some of those labels or actually act, uh, series and use Loki for that and just calculate those metrics on the fly because Loki can create those ad hoc Prometheus metrics from the logs and uh, you can then use it in combination with your Prometheus metrics and overall make sure that you're not spending too much costs on infrastructure uh, for the stuff that you don't really need. All right, well, that's it for today's quick presentation. It was a very short one, so I hope I, you enjoyed it. For all the resources that I used today in today's demo, you can actually find it on the first link. Um, so click there and you can download all the resources used. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>